you've definitely you've both seen an increased appetite in the business for people analytics. You know, what are you as as people analytics leaders planning to do to support this demand and, and help those business leaders make more decisions based on data? So I'll come to you first, Hersha, on that one. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about this. So what can we do even more? And I think at some point I was doubting maybe we've even been too successful at conveying the message to leaders and, and, and HR business partners, you have to use the data because people tend to ask for more and more data and then they are there again, okay, we need more data, another survey and no, we don't want again to run a survey because you don't want survey fatigue. So did you already check the data that's there? And also the question, what are you going to use uh, what are you going to do with uh, the data? And often the answer is, well, I know we have to use data, so I'm first collecting it and then I'm not sure, I'll see when I have the data what I'm going to do with it. And I think it's so important to always yeah, give back to employees what you have done with the data, but also to dive deeper in data that's already there, um, like Jordan said, using the passive uh, uh, data. And I think at this point we really have to think about which information are we going to provide to which level? So I really tend to provide senior level with strategic data, whereas the more operational data, yeah, we'll have the teams to talk about that, for discussions about work-life balance, energy, uh, asking each other for help, having the psychological safety, that's typical team uh, topics to discuss there on team level and um, I think that's interesting the, the discussion uh, who is going to get which data which insights um, for us as a Rabobank we're in this agile transformation and that also means that um, having the teams to decide upon uh, a lot of things and in some cases even uh, you can think of uh, uh, teams hiring uh, new people or making decisions on that but then you also if you want that you need to have the information streams uh, in order and not only provide the highest level with all the data but give them the more data for strategic direction setting so that's I think an interesting yeah, new way of thinking preventing the information overload because there's a tendency to okay give us all the data and then people yeah they don't have the time to uh, to read it so and you uh, yeah almost like building more trust at each level as you talked about whether it's executives and employees by giving them the right data to help them in Absolutely. their day-to-day -day work and you know and organize themselves as teams which i guess is a key facet of, of agile work and and jordan you know Maybe you might want to speak to the, the shift to, to, from Nestle to LSEG and, you know, the desire you, you're working at a data company now. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting and I think we're, we've kind of got a bit of a double-edged sword really in that uh, I, I work for a data company now and, and that means that our leaders are all, that they're all anxious to have access to lots of information, um, which is good. That means that they're impatient to get lots of information. Um, and in an integrating business, in, in both of our businesses, we're, we're kind of populated by data literate, uh, data literate, productive and competent people who want to ensure that the business leaders can make the right decisions that they need to make. Um, which often means that we find lots of people who've had a really great idea to create a dashboard that helps their leader to see that data and, and make some decisions with it. And then you look at the leader to their left and lo and behold, there's a dashboard that's been created for that leader that is helping them to make decisions. And maybe the calculations in those dashboards are the same. Maybe they're not. Uh, and maybe the, the way that the data made it to that dashboard is secure and, and permission controlled and maybe it's not. So I think there's, there's this great desire to have more information and then that responsibility on, on my team but in, in the people function more broadly to make sure that data privacy is governed at source and that data consistency is something that we, that we, that we stand everything else upon. And so there's that real wanting to be the enabler whilst also being the blocker eventually, uh, essentially to, to other people misusing some of that data. So it's, um, it, it's, it's interesting, but I think 
the, the opportunity that we have to, to ensure that the double-edged sword doesn't cut us in both directions is to, to focus on ensuring that our people function, whether it's business partners or talent managers or what have you, are enabled to be augmented by the insight and information and tools that are available to them, rather than having that expectation that perhaps they've got to go and build that for themselves because I think we, we heard in a, a, a sit down a little earlier, you know, the idea of someone, uh, an ex-co member taking a screenshot of a slide and then sending it to someone else and having the scramble to go and reproduce it for their area. I think if, if, we, if we're successful in ensuring that our business partners and talent managers and reward managers sing from the same song sheet and use the same tool set, we have a real opportunity to accelerate the way that all of our business leaders use the same information in the same way to make the right decisions. Um, but there's part of that that then speaks to a need to move really, really quickly. So I think a, a big focus for us is perhaps unsurprisingly getting all of our data into a data lake that is governed through data privacy by design, that is governed through role-based access control, that then enables us to give business intelligence teams elsewhere in the business the ability to pull a headcount, and we don't need to give them permission to do that because by role-based security, they're already allowed to, and it kind of enables us to enable the people function at the same time as enabling other parts of the business to do whatever they need to without getting in anyone's way. It's, um, it's different and new and equal challenges to Nestle, but good. It's always challenges. Yeah. Wherever you go. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.